Science Journal for Kids and Teens presents How Can Tardigrades Survive Without Water? Adapted from the original peer-reviewed paper in the journal PLOS One, published on January 11, 2023. Research conducted by Wukash Kachmarek, Milena Roshkovska, Hannah Kmita, and others from the Department of Animal Taxonomy and Ecology and the Department of Bioenergetics at the Institute of Molecular Biology and Biotechnology, both at Adam Mickiewicz University in Poland. See the accompanying PDF for additional authors and their affiliations. Read by Miranda Wilson. Abstract. Tardigrades, also called water bears, are tiny eight-legged animals that live all over Earth. They need water to be active, but have an amazing ability to survive long times without water. Tardigrades can even survive being in space. They survive by drying out into a hard little lump called a ton. We wanted to know how different species of tardigrades handle drying out. We found that some tardigrade species recover from their ton stage faster than others. Introduction Eight legs, grasping claws, a body like a caterpillar, and a round mouth probing for food. Is it an alien? A late night monster movie? No. It's a tiny creature called a tardigrade, one of the most resilient animals on the planet. Tardigrades can be found almost everywhere on Earth, from the tropics to polar regions. They live in mosses, lichens, and roots of grasses, soil, or water sediments. The biggest tardigrades are only a little more than a millimeter long. Tardigrades are extremely tough. Even though they need to be in water to be active, eat, and reproduce, they can survive for months or even years without a drop of water. They can survive intense heat and cold, and can even survive being in outer space. Scientists keep learning more about how tardigrades perform such amazing feats of survival. Water bears have a trick they use to survive dry spells. They curl up into a small lump and push all the water out of their bodies. Scientists call this transformed tardigrade a ton. Then, when water is available again, the tardigrade rehydrates. There are over 1,400 species of tardigrades. Some are herbivores and some are predators, but most terrestrial tardigrades have the ability to form a ton. Scientists have conducted lots of experiments with different tardigrade species, but it's hard to compare the results because the experiment methods can be very different from each other. This is why we wanted to see how different species of tardigrades recover after being without water, using the same experimental conditions. Here are two photos of tardigrades under a microscope. In photo A, you can see a tardigrade facing the front. You can see its eight legs and the head is at the top. A scale is in the upper right corner of the photo. Tardigrades are also called water bears or moss piglets. In photo B, you can see an image of a ton. There is a scale in the lower right corner of the photo. Most terrestrial tardigrades can dry themselves out into a lump called a ton to survive dry periods. Methods. Most tardigrades in our study came from soil and moss samples collected in different regions of Poland. We found some next to a railroad, on a concrete wall, in the soil at a national park, and on the lawn of a university. We also studied some that originally came from Madagascar. We made sure that all the tardigrades were healthy adults. In total, we studied 2,450 tardigrades. Our research included five populations of tardigrades from four different species. We divided the tardigrades into seven experimental groups. Each group included 70 specimens from each population. We put the tardigrades into petri dishes. Then we placed the dishes in a special box called an environmental chamber and let the dishes dry inside for three days. We let each experimental group stay dry for a different amount of time, ranging from zero to 240 days. 
Next, we rehydrated the tardigrades by adding a small amount of water to the petri dishes. We then used a microscope to examine the tardigrades until we saw them move. We wrote down how long it took for them to start moving. We also counted how many tardigrades didn't move after 24 hours of being in water. Results. The longer each tardigrade was in its ton stage, the longer it took for us to see the first movement after adding water. When the tardigrades were only in their ton stage for a short time, they came back to activity in 3 to 13 minutes. After 240 days without water, the first sign of movement took longer. The differences between species were larger too. The first movement for Macrobiotis pseudohufalandi happened after 33 minutes on average, while the urban population of Echiniscus testudo took 96 minutes. The groups that spent the longest time without water had the smallest number of tardigrades survive. For some species, we hardly saw any difference between the number of tardigrades that survived for a few days and the number that survived after 120 days. We saw larger differences among the species after 240 days. For that group, only 1% of the Pseudhexapodibius degenerans started moving again within the 24-hour observation period, compared to 43% of Paramacobiotis experimentalis. In figure one, you can see the percent of each tardigrade population that survived for each experimental group. The vertical lines mark the number of days the group spent without water in the ton stage. For the species E. testudo, we looked at populations from two places. Group A are specimens collected from a national park, and group B were collected in a city. On the y-axis of the graph, you can see the percent of tardigrades surviving, and on the x-axis, you can see the number of days they were without water. Data from each species is represented by a different color. Blue for population A of Echiniscus testudo, red for population B of the same species, green for Macrobiotis pseudohufalandi, orange for Paramacrobiotis experimentalis, and yellow for Pseudhexapodibius degenerans. Using the graph, if someone told you how many tardigrades in a group survived, could you tell them how long they had been in their ton stage? Why or why not? Discussion our study showed some interesting similarities and differences between tardigrade species. All the populations we studied had more success returning to activity after short dry periods than after long dry periods. Most tardigrade species in our study only needed a few minutes to recover, even after a few months of dry conditions. Responding quickly to water helps tardigrades survive it can be hard to know how long water will be available. By acting quickly, tardigrades can make sure to find something to eat before the water dries up again. We were surprised to see some differences from early studies. In our study, E. testudo had a low survival rate compared to the other species, but earlier studies showed E. testudo reviving after being in their ton stage for many years. We think that it might be due to differences in how quickly the tardigrades were dried in our experiment compared to earlier experiments. In the natural environment, the drying out process is probably not as harsh as it was in the laboratory. Conclusion Animal species have to adapt to survive in their environment. When the environment changes, animals have a harder time surviving. People change the environment in many ways. One way we can help animals survive is by helping to restore habitats. If your family has access to a garden, you can choose native species to plant. You can help clean up litter at a local nature area. You can also help limit habitat destruction by being careful about how much water and electricity you use. Thank you for listening to this recording. Visit our website, sciencejournalforkids.org, for more free science teaching resources.